of all, just to um, pick up on a couple of people, particularly women, who said about the terrific things that Islam gives women in terms of rights. The first thing is, yes, in 7th century Arabia, some of this was progressive. In 21st century Britain, it is not. And you have to make that fundamental admission that the Quran is not a document for women's rights in Europe in 2010. It is not. Secondly, secondly. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be checking out a video from Douglas Murray titled Douglas Murray Educates Muslim Women's Rights Activist with Truth About Islam. Wow, I believe this is going to be an interesting one. So let's get started. Go. You are about to see Douglas Murray tell the truth as it is. Douglas Murray breaks the silence on immigration and speaks what is on everyone's mind. In the following clip, Douglas Murray educates a young Muslim student. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Tariq says that Europeans associate Islam with violence. There is some truth in that. There is also a very obvious reason for that, which is that Islam is associated with violence. It was not Buddhists who flew planes into the Twin Towers. It was not Hindus or Jews that blew up the London Underground buses a few years ago. And that simple fact has to be acknowledged if you're even going to start a dialogue. Now, the, what is happening, ladies and gentlemen, it's not a pantomime. I'd uh, argue that Europe has done not too badly, considering the circumstances. In the middle of the last century, there was or there was an almost negligible Muslim presence in Europe. At the turn of the 21st, in Western Europe alone, there were 15 to 17 million Muslims. That's a very fast migration, ladies and gentlemen, one of the fastest in human history. And no society would find it easy to deal with that kind of migration. As it happens, uh, European societies, Western European societies, have, I think, dealt with this much better than some would. Certainly, Muslims coming to live in Britain and in Western Europe enjoy more rights and better rights, among them freedom of worship, than they do in any Islamic country in the earth here today. We do have a problem. We have a problem when the failures of Islam throughout the world, the failures of all Islamic societies, come here into Britain. Their intolerance of freedom of conscience, their intolerance of apostates, their intolerance of freedom of expression and freedom uh, of speech. Their intolerance of minorities, other religious minorities, sexual minorities, their intolerance of gays, their dislike and distrust of half of the population, women, and many, many other things. And the call, what's more, and the call, what's more, for a parallel legal system within Britain and European societies. This is monstrous. No other group behaves like this, asks for parallel laws. This is a fundamental problem, and it's one we're going to have to deal with. It's a problem between a society Western Europe that believes that laws are based on reason and Islam that believes that they are based on revelation. Between these two ideas, I'm not sure there is very much compromise for Europe. It is not Europe that has let down its Muslims, but the Muslims of Europe that have let down Europe. This is not solely something which we have to say we can never reconcile. Of course we can reconcile this, but we need to be honest about it. We need to be frank about it, and we cannot avoid things just because they are unpleasant. And if there were one thing I would wish Muslims in Europe could learn today, as fast as possible, it would be this, that you have no right in this society not to be offended. You have no right to say that because you don't like something, you can commit violence or you would like something to be stopped or censored, you have no right to have more hate laws or hate crime laws or hate speech laws just to defend Islam. You have to realize, the Muslims of Europe have to realize that a society in which even your deepest feelings can be trodden upon is the only society worth living in. And the sooner we can learn that, the sooner that Islam can learn that within Europe, the better. It is not Europe that has failed its Muslims. It is Islam that has failed Europe. I'd argue Islam has failed its Muslims. Thank you. Douglas Murray brings attention to the rapid and unprecedented migration of Muslims into Europe, a phenomenon that no society can easily absorb in a short period. This mass migration is one of the fastest in human history, and it's understandable that it would bring significant challenges. Despite these challenges, European societies have made commendable efforts to accommodate these new arrivals, providing them with rights and freedoms that are often lacking in their countries of origin. 
Europe's approach to integration has been notably generous. For example, countries like Germany and Sweden have welcomed large numbers of refugees, offering them housing, education, and health care. This level of support is a testament to Europe's commitment to human rights and dignity. In contrast, many Islamic countries, even wealthy ones, have been less willing to take in refugees, highlighting a stark difference in approaches. However, integration is not a one-way street. While European societies strive to be inclusive and supportive, it's equally important for Muslim communities to adapt to the values and norms of their new homes. This means embracing core Western principles such as freedom of expression, gender equality, and secular laws. These values are fundamental to European society and are essential for maintaining social cohesion and harmony. Statistics support Murray's concerns about integration. For instance, studies have shown that second-generation immigrants in Europe often experience higher unemployment rates and face greater challenges in education compared to their native counterparts. This indicates that integration efforts need to be more robust and that immigrant communities must engage more actively in the process. Uh, I just want to make a quick uh, comment to the throwaway comments made by uh, Douglas Murray uh, about uh, Muslim women and Islam uh, uh, and its way it treats women. And I think that uh, Muslim women are quite capable of speaking for themselves. And I think the sort of <laughs> myths people like you put in the public arena, and I've heard other similar arguments from BNP and all that kind of stuff, they think it justifies their argument by saying, well, Islam treats 50% of its population in a really derogatory and whatever, whatever way that you like to explain okay. it. Okay. The lady now wearing the hat. Just that comment to you, what you said about women, I think, first of all, that's really misleading because you're getting culture confused with religion. And if you just take a moment to look into the Quran, you'll see the Quran gave women rights long before women in Europe started burning brass for their own rights. And you'll also see that actually in the Quran, it encourages women to seek education, it protects us from violence, and it actually gives us rights in marriage. Right, okay. So you're very wrong. Douglas Murray, director of the Centre for Social Cohesion, a think tank which studies radicalisation and extremism in Britain. Um, your closing statement. Thank you. Well, first of all, just to um, pick up on a couple of people, particularly women, who said about the terrific things that Islam gives women in terms of rights. The first thing is, yes, in 7th century Arabia, some of this was progressive. In 21st century Britain, it is not. And you have to make that fundamental admission. When a Muslim woman stands to challenge Douglas Murray on his statement regarding how Islam treats women, she argues that the Quran grants women rights and encourages them to seek education, suggesting that any oppression they face is cultural rather than religious. Douglas Murray disagrees with this perspective. First, the Quran does contain verses that appear to grant women certain rights, such as the right to education and some protections within marriage. However, he points out that these rights are often overshadowed by other Quranic injunctions and hadiths, sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, that prescribe unequal treatment of women. For instance, in matters of inheritance, a woman's share is typically half that of a man's, and in legal testimony, the testimony of two women is considered equivalent to that of one man. These scriptural mandates institutionalize gender inequality and cannot be dismissed as merely cultural practices. Moreover, the oppression of women in many Muslim-majority countries is deeply rooted in both religious and cultural practices. For example, female genital mutilation is practiced widely in some Islamic societies. While FGM is not explicitly mentioned in the Quran, it is justified by some Islamic scholars and communities based on hadiths and cultural traditions. The prevalence of FGM in countries like Egypt, Sudan, and Somalia, where it affects a significant percentage of women, underscores the intersection of religious justification and cultural enforcement. Statistics further support this argument. According to a 2016 report by the World Economic Forum, the majority of the countries with the largest gender gaps are Muslim-majority countries. These gaps are evident in areas such as education, economic participation, political empowerment, and health. Countries like Yemen, Pakistan, and Saudi Arabia consistently rank at the bottom of global gender equality indices, indicating systemic issues that go beyond mere cultural practices. Furthermore, the widespread enforcement of dress codes, such as the hijab, niqab, or burqa, in many Islamic countries as another example of religiously sanctioned oppression. While some argue that these garments are a matter of personal choice and modesty, it is undeniable that in many contexts, 
women face severe social and legal repercussions if they choose not to comply. In Iran and Saudi Arabia, for example, women can be arrested or punished for not adhering to strict dress codes, indicating that these practices are enforced through religious and legal means, rather than being purely cultural. Wow, what an interesting debate. You can tell it was really heated just by the point and the facts Douglas have stated in this video. We can all tell Douglas Murray is a very articulated person. He's very sincere. He's very honest. He's always ready to say the truth. He's always ready to stand by the truth. He's not afraid to say the truth. And based on the facts Douglas have stated in this video, I believe uh, if you are coming into uh, a country, there's a need for you to be able to uh, adjust yourself, to accommodate uh, the host country's culture, to accommodate uh, the host country value, to accommodate the host country tradition. And I believe Brit uh, Br uh, British has its own identity and British identity is embodied and rooted in its culture, in its tradition, in its value system. So if you are coming into a country as an immigrant, you have to be able to accept the people's culture. In order for you to be able to integrate effectively, there's a need for you to accept the people's culture. There's a need for you to adhere to the people's tradition, adhere to the people's value system. You don't have to come into a country and you try to impose your own belief, you try to impose your own culture, you try to impose your own value system uh, on the people. I feel that is wrong. I feel that is totally unacceptable. And, you know, Douglas Murray always talk about uh, Islamist fundamentalist, Islamist extremism. And Douglas Murray always say, you have no right not to be offended in a society where there is two or three or ten or hundred people. You have no right not to be offended. And you don't have to resort to violence because you feel someone say something and you feel it's an hate speech or you feel what the person say is against your religion or against the founder of your religion. Then you intend to uh, resort to violence by arming the person. Violence is not accepted in any society. Violence is not accepted in Britain. Violence is not accepted in Europe. Violence is not accepted in UK. You don't have to resort to violence because you feel offended by what someone's saying. There are better ways of addressing such issue. When someone says something and you are not okay with it, you are not comfortable with it, there are better ways of addressing such problem. It's, it's, it's better you engage in a dialogue and try to address the issue in order to get an understanding rather than arming the person, rather than approaching the issue in a violent way. And a lot of Muslims tend to complain that uh, uh, that if the Muslim does anything that they tend to say the Muslim are becoming radical, the Muslim are becoming extremists, the Muslim are becoming violent, that is not true. And from Douglas Murray argument and from the fact he have stated that a lot of Muslim people that come into Britain, that come into UK, they fail to integrate into uh, Britain culture, into Britain uh, tradition. They fail to accept Britain values because the, because the culture and the value system and the tradition from the country they are coming from differs from Britain culture differs from Britain's tradition. So as a result, they fail to integrate because uh, they fail to integrate because they feel their uh, Britain culture is against is against their tradition, against their belief, against their religion. So I believe there's a need for immigrants to adjust themselves to be able to accommodate uh, the host country's culture. To be able to accommodate the host country tradition, to be able to accommodate the host country value system, and from the point Douglas Murray have stated that it's not Europe that has failed this Muslim, but it's Islam that has failed this Muslim. That there are a lot of violence associated with Islam because of there are a lot of 
violence verses in the Quran. And Douglas Murray always talk about, uh, also talk about uh, gender equality, that there is nothing like gender equality uh, in Islam because uh, 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 there are some verses that talk against that. And a lot of Muslim country, a lot of Muslim country don't support gender equality. And I believe one of the speaker that are uh, one of uh, of the audience, one of the uh, audience, the lady, she tried to educate Douglas. She tried to school Douglas. She tried to dismantle Douglas by saying Douglas is speaking uh, of the women in Islam, but Douglas actually knew nothing about the women in Islam. That Douglas actually knew nothing about the Quran, and she made some points that the Quran. Uh, the Quran uh, 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 admonish Muslim women to embrace education. And from the point Douglas Murray has given in order to uh, address the point the lady, uh, in order to address the question the lady asked, Douglas believed that the problem associated uh, with, uh, with the, uh, the, the, the problem of violence associated with Islam and associated with uh, 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 the Muslim is not only because of uh, culture, it's also associated to religion. It's also associated to religion. So you can't say uh, the problem is only associated with culture, living religion. From Douglas Murray point of view, the problem is associated in both culture and religion. Because a lot of these immigrants, they came from Muslim countries that their culture, uh, there's nothing like equality. Their culture, they have to do certain things. And in Britain culture, those things are not allowed. So I believe there is a need for immigrants to be able to integrate into their host country, integrate uh, effectively in their host country by embracing the host country culture, by embracing the host country host country religion by embracing the host country value system in order to be able to interact and integrate effectively to become an economic asset to their host country. I really learned a lot just by listening to Douglas Murray. So I also like to hear your comments. Keep the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.